Hi, this is Cherie Shanti of Wild and Wise and Return to the Roots. Welcome to the Cuba Connection, The People Speak. In these short documentaries, I'll be sharing with you some of the experiences I've had on my travels to the beautiful, magical island of Cuba, one of my personal favorite places in the world. There's so much more to Cuba than what most tourists experience. Behind the beautiful mountains and the crystal blue seas lies a thick, rich tapestry of social interactions and cultural distinctions that make Cuba a fascinating study and a place that we can learn much from in the way that they deal with their problems, they handle everyday life, they find creative solutions to just about anything. Every trip I go, I spend most of my time with the people in their homes, learning their music, their dances, sharing with them on their history, and asking questions that we all need to hear the answers to directly from the mouths of Cubans. We get so much propaganda about Cuba and the United States. I'm here to share with you another perspective. I hope that you enjoy these short documentaries and learn something about this magical, beautiful island. And when you're ready to go, give me a call. I'll help you out in any way I can. The thing is that most Americans that come won't see real Cuban life. They're gonna see, they're gonna see the tourist version of Cuban life, which is, you know, oh, so they will find the out pretty we- parts and you know, the music, and they don't see really the day-to-day struggles that you guys have and how hard it is the to get daily things. Struggle, the daily struggle, trying to survive in here. But anyway, we do. Yes. Anyway, we do. We do our best always to keep on surviving. And by the way, I would like to say to all Americans, we Cuba, we never hate them. Never. This is just a question of politics. You are welcome in Cuba as well. We don't hate you like some people have been trying to show you. We want you in here if you want to come around to share with us our style of life. And you will enjoy it, definitely. Not everything is bad. And in Cuba we say as well that with a little bit of rum <laughs> and music. <laughs> everything yeah, is better. Everything is better. <laughs> so this right here is... A little it's Cuban a, store. Uh, Ration store. Anyway. For the Cubans. It's what we get monthly by the government. They're <laughs> 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 like, they like, hey, they think it's funny where he's filming. <laughs> but this he's, is talking, a, he's talking about the uh, products they sell in there for the Cubans. The means, <laughs> means from, from beef as well, from, uh, from pork, and uh, eggs, a lot of eggs in Cuba. So I want to talk to you about the food for a second, because a lot of people in the States have this story that there's no food in Cuba and everyone's starving to death, and no, the propaganda that we get is that Oh, yeah. And even from Cubans that I know, like good friends of mine that grew up here but had to leave when they were young, they, their story in their mind from their childhood is that everyone's starving, there's no food, no. you know, no one's healthy. It's but not true. tell me the truth. You've I, been on both sides. I've been on both sides, and I can tell you as well. Uh, yeah, we got in Cuba sometimes kind of necessities, for sure. We got it, but people never starve never starve to death or something. At least you got to always the hand of a friend, the hand of, the hand of a neighbor, someone who helps you up, someone who, who gives you, or, or someone who shares right. what they got with you. And this is our character and our style of life as well. It's the Cuban way. We share what we have. Even if we, if we have a little bit, we just share it. Yeah. Divide it, and then we give it to a friend or to a relative, to anyone. And what about the quality of the food? The quality of food is okay, because Cuba, Cubans, we have a good taste for food. A good taste, and we made a kind of um, Cuban-style sauces. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we mix it with all kinds of products, yeah. with meat, with rice, with beans. So it's not spicy as Mexican, but we, we use a lot of spices, and that's the reason why the quality is really good. But as far as, like, some, I know there's... Um, like picadilla and yeah. some of these things that picadilla are more processed. Picadilla is minced. It's like processed. Yeah, a it's, bit. A, it's processes as well. 
with some peppers together, the meat together with all of this. It's just like mm, uh, grinded. grinded. It's grinded like uh, with peppers, with garlic, with onion, and all together after that you just fry it with oil and after that you add a little bit of tomato sauce and it takes a flavor or really a flavor. And that's good quality. Some people say it's not good quality. Yeah, because sometimes they alterate some products in here. That's yeah. the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. But usually, to answer the question you told me, you asked me, in Cuba, no one is starving. At least you get a dish with rice and beans. Right. And just a banana, maybe. Right. But at least it's not like Africa. It's not like exactly. the rest of South America. Not like America. the kind of poverty yeah, that, so you know. And that's what I tell people my, from my experience. Is that, yeah, there's, people are struggling in some ways. Not everyone has running water or certain things, but I've never seen anyone going hungry. But what do you think now, Vladimir, because there's so many people now coming and renting casas for tourists, yeah. especially in Trinidad. And now I'm seeing people having a hard time finding homes. Cuban people having a hard time renting a house yep. or finding a place to live because it's all tourists. Yeah, but those people mostly are the people who are coming from out of the city. Outside. From outside the city, from other uh, towns, other people, from other provinces. And they are coming here to find a job or to have a work in here. And uh, they, they must find a place. And they don't have family. To stay. To stay and, and they, they don't have any relative or any family in here, any fa familiar person, they have to rent a a, a private home. And for Cubans, the price is different than for tourists. Right. Also, you don't get the whole house. Sometimes you get only a bathroom. Right. Yeah, with a fan and something like that. Just that. Yeah. But those are mostly the people who are from abroad Trinidad, from yeah. outside Trinidad. Like yourself. Like myself. I live in Cienfuegos and I'm renting a house in here for about 35. Cook what means about 600 Cuban pesos, but it's not my salary. But thanks God, I work in a, a firm as a tour operator, Havana Tour, so I promote it from here. And uh, I get some tips from my clients, and I can afford it. Hey, because for the average Cuban, that wouldn't be possible, right? And sadly, for the other Cubans, it would be almost impossible to get a good, a good home in here or at least a place to stay. Those wages can go anywhere from 20 cook to, I know our medicals, doctors, that make 50, 55 cook a month, right? Suddenly. Yeah. And that's the reason why month. I heard, I'm not pretty sure because I just came back to Cuba last year. I was living in Europe. But I, I heard that the government is taking some measures about this to increase the salary of the doctors and uh, nurses because many of them after graduated, they leave the country because they have more chances abroad, right. mostly in the United States or Europe. But I, I heard, I'm not pretty sure that the government is going to increase. So Vladimir, tell me about your experience because you lived, you lived outside of the country for 15, 15 years, years and now you came back. Why? I just came back because I miss my country. I miss my land, my people, and also because I had a hard experience in Europe after getting divorced from uh, the mother of my daughter mm -hmm. and I just decided to come back to be with my family. I was alone in there after divorcing and uh, the only thing I have over there is my daughter. And you said earlier to me that you prefer living here now. Actually, yeah, because for a man like me, for example, 45 years old, it's not easy to restart the life again outside of Cuba. It's not easy to find a job. Even if I speak full languages, it's not easy to find a proper job. And then you have to work with 45 years and whatever comes. So in Cuba, I got a nice job. One of the best you can have in Cuba, tourism. And I'm looking forward the Americans to come and to offer me a job when you start investing in here. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I feel. Yeah.